Of course. Yeah. I do the rap stuff, Baron's a stand up. But don't try to brand us or put us in handcuffs for fans up. Joe's and got some music too. It feels new, but it's not confusing. New Negro, some people are scared of. A word of a scene they was not aware of. We heard you believe what the media get told you. Them old ideas get blown up. Behold a new Negro. This, that, and a third. Man, you say you seen it all and you sound absurd. I'ma tell you one you for sure ain't heard. I'ma tell you one you for sure ain't heard. Yeah. Hello. Hello, 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 everyone. Oh. The two beautiful people. Welcome to the new Negroes. I'm Baron Vaughn. I'm open Mike Eagle. Uh fellas, if you're hype, make some noise. <laughs> fellas, keep it going if you're worried. <laughs> Are you trying to say you're worried? Yeah, this is my worried voice. Wim, 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 wim. You know, Varen, you're allowed to express your feelings here. You don't have to, like, hide from them. Oh, really? <laughs> yes, really. So could you, in your best inside voice, explain to me what's going on with you? Well, my <clears throat> well Mike. I've just been uh, a little worried about being a man, you know? What do you mean being a man? You mean like being a good man or like a real man or like, what do you mean? All of that, just a man, because everybody's talking about masculinity and how toxic it has become. I mean, it hasn't become, it's been this way. It's like ingrained in our culture. It uh, plays a big part in things like workplace harassment, homophobia, domestic violence. That's right, mass shootings. Police brutality, Matt Damon. Whoa, 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 Baron, Baron. If you're going to put Matt Damon on that list, put him first. <laughs> okay. I have spent a lot of my young life trying to live up to some idea of manliness that I now know is some bullshit. And that's how we're socialized, right? Mm -hmm. Little baby boys are born a clean slate, then they're bombarded with toxic ideas, and they mutate into monsters like Godzilla. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly like Godzilla. Just stomping around, ruining lives, causing mayhem and massive destruction. Running around with no pants on. Oh yeah. <laughs> but see, the thing is, this might feel new to us, but women have been talking about this for a really long time. Okay, okay, so it's more like if Godzilla showed up in America, started stomping around, and we're like, what? There was no way to prepare for this. Why did no one tell us? And women are all like, uh, nigga, I've been Japan, like this whole time. <laughs> been talking about this literally forever. Been talking about this. <laughs> exactly. Or at least that's how my wife explained it to me. <laughs> uh, she laid it all out for me. All I did was uh, watch Atlanta without her. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> well, you had me at Godzilla. No, that's her metaphor. She had you at Godzilla. Don't get me in trouble. Hold this. She will talk to me like this. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And speaking of trouble, we got trouble right here in Negro City. <laughs> with a capital T, and that rhymes with C, and that stands for comedian, Sonia Denise. Yeah. I, uh, I'm originally from DC. I live in New York now. Yeah. Everybody's from DC. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, well, maybe you guys know this. So, like, I one of my last memories before I left, I remember I was walking through our version of Chinatown, and I put air quotes up because there's a Fuddruckers there. So, <laughs> not very authentic, this experience. But I'm walking through, and there's this guy on the corner, older homeless gentleman. He's panhandling, and as I walk by, he's like, hey, hey, do you have a dollar to help out a fellow human being? And I was like, oh, dude, I'm so sorry. I don't have any cash on me. And he's like, you know what? Fuck you, yuppie, all right? <laughs> you walking around with your fancy thousand dollar cell phone. You're telling me you don't have a dollar to help out a white man? And I was like, <laughs> okay, two things about that. Uh, <laughs> first, thousand dollar cell phone? <laughs> How long have you been homeless? <laughs> like, you're just not current on these prices, uh, you know? Second, help out a white man? <laughs> it's like, I think that he thinks that being white and a man is what's keeping him down. Just can't get up in America. You know? I don't know, you know? 
Because I like, I love being a black female, but if you offered me white man, <laughs> I'd have to think about that. You know what I'm saying? Like, throw it up, white dudes, come on, yeah, kill him. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Unless you guys want, no, we're not. Okay, cool. Uh, no, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't, I love black guys. I love them. You know, so my, my best roommates, white guys. Um. But no, I went to see a psychiatrist recently, and for those of you that are like, I'm happy, what's that? It's like, shut up. Uh, no. <laughs> No, you go to a person, you tell them all the deep, dark secrets you can't tell your friends without bumming them out. And uh, they throw pills at you, and some days, you feel all right. <laughs> Would recommend, it's pretty tight. Um, no, it's great. I, I, I had a friend, though, that was like, you know what, you know, no, no, you gotta go to my therapist, though. Like, he's amazing, like, he's, he's insightful, he's affordable, he's, and I was like, you had me at affordable, let's go, you know? And uh, we went, and I saw this affordable man and I was like, this will not do. <laughs> no, uh, he had on skinny jeans, okay? <laughs> With a denim vest, <laughs> all right, <laughs> on top of a denim shirt, <laughs> a beard and a bun. It's like, oh, I'm into this personally, but not in my healthcare professionals. You know what I mean? Like, what's happening? Did I forget we're gonna fucking Coachella? You know, I don't understand. It's like, I just feel like I can't tell you my suicide plan if you know who Childish Gambino is. Like, I'm not gonna do it. It's a fence. No. You know? His therapist was also hot, too. Blech. <laughs> it's like, I'm so sad. Are you hard? <laughs> it's like, can you sexually harass your therapist? Yes, you can. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> they tell you you can tell them anything, but apparently there are boundaries. <laughs> So over the patriarchy. Fuck the patriarchy. Thank you guys for listening. I'm Sonia Denis. Bye bye. So good. Any parents in the audience? Any? Any dads? Where my dad's at? Yeah, where my dad's at? Where my dad's at? Where is my dad? Where is my dad? Are you my dad? Don't you know your dad now? Less me, more you, Michael. Um, does Fair. being a father intimidate you? No, I'm not scared of my son. He's 10. I think I can still take him, you know? No, I meant, that, like, aren't you concerned about setting a good example of masculinity or finding good examples of it for your son? Because when I was growing up, I looked up to somebody like um, Shaft, right? <laughs> No, because he's, like he's like an iconic example of, of how to be a black man. And now when I look at it, I see that he's just a violent dick, you know? Because he was a detective? No, because his name literally means penis. Well, there are different people on TV now mm -hmm. setting examples of masculinity. Oh yeah, like me. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm on like five and a half different TV shows and that is a great idea, Mike. What? I'm on TV enough that I can make sure that my son only watches shows I'm on, so I can make sure he only has one role model in his life, which is me or Lily Tomlin. <laughs> That's perfect, Mike. That's perfect. Clearly, your son will be very well adjusted. Okay, <laughs> problem solved. All right, you ready for the next comic? This comedian is a true delight to watch. Give it up for Sashir Zameda. <laughs> I'm glad they put my portrait up here before I got on. And that's my look, too. I'm always like... <laughs> I just left my metal headdress at home, but you get it. <laughs> I've been traveling a lot lately. I went camping for the first time recently. Thank you. <laughs> I'll never do it again. I feel like when I tell people I've been camping for the first time, they're like, but you're a full adult. But I'm black. <laughs> not something my family did. My parents were like, we bought a house. We sleep on the inside. And my boyfriend is white, and he took me to his homeland of Missouri to do this. And the group I was with is my boyfriend and his childhood friends, so everyone else is white, which is not their fault. And we're getting ready to swim in the river, and the way they're getting ready is by putting on prescription sunscreen and long sleeve swim shirts and long swim shorts. And this is all foreign to me, because I have melanin. 
so I just spray a little sunscreen and go. And it's just further proof to me that white people aren't made for this earth. <laughs> like, y'all can't handle outside. <laughs> I feel like people don't always like it when I talk about race in my sets, which I get. It makes some people feel uncomfortable. I've done shows where you can literally hear assholes tighten up like, ah! <laughs> make her stop. <laughs> but I don't think race is such a touchy, taboo topic that we can't discuss or think about or laugh at. And I think it's good if we ask each other questions or how else are we gonna learn from our mistakes? I, when I was in college, I lived down the hall from a foreign exchange student from Korea, and she kept asking me if I knew certain people. She'd be like, do you know John? And I'd be like, no. She'd be like, do you know Shana? And I'd be like, no. And I'm not sure what tipped me off, but I started to wonder if she was only asking me if I knew black people. So I asked her, I was like, are you only asking me if I know black people? And she goes, yes. <laughs> and I was like, do you think I know all the black people at this school because I'm black? And she goes, uh-huh, yes. <laughs> and I was like, you can't do that. That's a stereotype. That'd be like if I assume you knew all the Korean people at this school. And she goes, I do. <laughs> we all know each other. <laughs> and I was like, Never mind. <laughs> it's a good thing we kept talking. If that conversation had ended two sentences before that point, I would have left being like, that racist bitch. And she would have left being like, what's wrong with this antisocial black girl? She's not hanging out with her friends. <laughs> All right, thank you guys. <laughs>
I can't believe they still got a war on drugs. We still got a war on drugs. The police got the nerve to have drug dogs, which I don't believe in. You think it's dogs out there that can sniff out all the different types of drugs all the time? Yeah, right. If that was the case, I would have went to the shelter and adopted 12 goddamn dogs. I'd have a drug dog sled team that I just walk through bad neighborhoods shouting out whatever I'm looking for. Kush! Kush! Let's go, boys. What you got there? That's some heroin? Put it back, you're gonna be sleepy. <laughs> they pulled me over with the drug dog one time. This one I knew they weren't real. Cause the officer got me out the car and he got the dog out the car. He walked the dog to the trunk, then he tapped on the trunk and the dog jumped up there. And he was like, the dog's telling me that it's drugs in the car. And I was like, what? <laughs> Cause I already ate it. I knew it wasn't no more drugs. So I looked at the dog and then I looked at him and I tapped on the trunk. The dog jumped back up there and I was like, oh, well he told me, no it's not. He made a mistake. <laughs> Not the only dog whisperer. Let's get up here. Every dog know how to do that. Get your ass out of here. Hey, look, I'm Clayton English. That's my time, y'all. Been amazing. Thank y'all. One of the biggest issues when talking about toxic masculinity is the concept of consent. Because there seems to be this notion that asking for consent kills the vibe. You know, a lot of dudes just kind of like, bro, what about that sweet, sweet mystery, you know? <laughs> when she don't know, that's how you go, go. Uh, no. Uh, mystery got a lot of people in trouble. Uh, mysterious men are going to jail right now. That's dumb anyway, because what's sexier than knowing is someone else wants to do exactly what you want to do, right? Exactly. And to prove that point, me and my friend Lizzo wrote a sexy-ass song about consent. Y'all want to hear that? Give me that! Like, it's about to go down tonight, cute. I mean, I'm into it. He's different than any other guy I've ever matched with. He's being respectful and shit. Ooh, respectful. That is different. And he hella jumpy. Like a rescue? Mm-hmm. And I got his home right here. Right here. About to rescue him in this pussy. Okay. Rescue him. You being hella nasty right in now. my pussy. All right, just text me if you need his anything. His home is in my pussy. In my pussy? Stop pointing at me. <laughs> Girl, I want extra consent. It might not be super smoke, but listen here, I want permission if I'm making a move. Girl, I want extra consent. Looks like we might have sex. Do me a favor, get a pen and put your name by this X. Girl, I want extra consent. I feel like we getting warm. Give me a second, hang tight. I need to print out this form. Oh shit, the paper is torn. I need to print out another copy. Gets white on top over a yellow color copy so press down hard and push the signature through i gotta know to be public i should have mentioned to you i didn't know how to say it i didn't want to assume and that was short demonstration i had to exit this room and there's a door on the left another door on the right and in the case of emergency you can follow these lights and please note the panic button at the foot of the bed and give me verbal confirmation that you heard what i said Girl, I need extra consent. Don't need no NDA. Just need them YESs at the end of a date. I'd like a list of your preferences and a list of complaints. I want permission to hurry up and permission to wait. Girl, I need extra consent. Girl, I need extra consent. I ain't making no assumptions like the rest of them gents. Girl, I want extra consent. For every different position, I got a unique fetish. Get off on getting permission. Mission, girl. <laughs> like you could use a break. Would you like to leave this place and go to another place with me? Now you talking, Dilbert, let's go. Would you call me the notary B.I.G.? 
course I can. Oh, well. Let's hear it for Open Mike Eagle and Lizzo, everybody. And give it up for all the performers you've seen tonight, not literally, unless that's what you want to do and don't do anything you don't want to do. And thank you all for watching the new Negroes. We will see you next week. Good night. Good dish.